everybody welcome back to plain simple today we're going to be looking at uh, how the engine sizes are calculated and what the size of the pistons have to do with the size of the engine let's uh, start with a little bit of theory let's, uh... okay now that we're uh, set up class is in session pay attention whenever you hear sizes of engines being a, be it in cubic inches, uh, liters, cc's, it's it's all given in a unit of volume. Uh, in the case of most cars, the volume, the size of the engine, is given in liters. Liters is a metric unit for for volume, and you you can have a 2.5 liter engine, 2.4, 5.0. In the case of a Mustang GT, you have a 5.0 liter engine that's a five liter displacement what does that mean that's what we're gonna get into today a scaling down the size of the engine considerably from a Mustang's 5.0 engine let's move down to a scooter's 50 cc engine what's that's a change of unit cc's versus liters cc's are is short for cubic centimeters one liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. Therefore, a 2.5 liter engine would be the equivalent or the same thing as a 2,500 cc or 2,500 cc engine. 2,500 cubic centimeters or 2.5 liters. So now we're looking at an engine that has a single piston displacement of 50 cc's. That's what we have here. This is the piston that came out of a scooter that had a displacement of 50 cc's, 50 uh, cubic centimeters. What volume is that 50 cc's referring to? Let me explain that to you. This would be looking at a cutaway, a side view of a piston in an engine, a, 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 a cylinder. In an engine you have a piston, which is this right here. That's the piston that rides up and down inside of a cylinder. A cylinder, quite literally, is a cavity for the piston to move up and down on. That describes a cylinder. The volume of that cylinder is what determines the size of the engine. Now, that cylinder is described with the bore. The bore is the diameter of the, the diameter of the piston or the cylinder. The stroke is the amount of travel that the piston does up and down inside of that cylinder. Now, if you have a disc, take this piston to be a disc and you slide it, you displace it in and out inside of a cylinder that describes a certain volume. That volume is the displacement of the engine. In the case of this particular engine, the 50cc, you have a piston that has a diameter of 43.5 millimeters. Radius is half of that. The area of a circle, which we'll want to determine the area of this circle here, the top of the, sun, the piston. Formula for area is pi r squared so if you take the radius and you run it through the equation, you end up with an area of the piston, the top of the piston, of 1,486 squared millimeters, or 14.86 centimeters squared, squared centimeters. Now if you take that, that is the area of this, the top of the piston. You take that and you multiply it by a stroke of 3.36 centimeters, Multiply the area by the height, and that's the formula for the volume of a cylinder. There's the area of the piston multiplied times the height that that piston is moving up and down, which is the stroke. That gives you a volume on the combustion chamber here. This is the combustion chamber. This is where the air and fuel mixture gets compressed and gets burnt. This the size of this right here 
is what determines the capacity of the engine to burn air and fuel, therefore producing power. The bigger this combustion chamber is, the more power the engine will make. And as I was saying over here, with a piston area of 14.86 and a stroke of 3.36 centimeters, you multiply one by the other and you get a displacement or a volume of this cylinder of 50 cubic centimeters. That is the size of a 50cc scooter engine. Now, this is in the case of a single piston engine. The size of the engine is the size of that volume in the combustion chamber. This, for example, is the piston off of a 150cc scooter engine. You can see that it's considerably bigger. Because you have three times the displacement still on a single piston. Now this is a piston of a uh, small Briggs and Stratton uh, engine that we're going to look at soon that is slightly bigger than the 150cc scooter engine. I am not sure of the displacement of this one, but it's a little more. But you can see how the pistons are getting bigger. Now all three of these cases are from engines that are single piston uh, engines. That means that whatever the displacement or the volume of the combustion chamber is, that is the size of the engine. Now, in the case of this guy, this is a piston that is a little bigger than all the other guys. There's a 50cc piston. This guy is from a Lycoming O320 air-cooled aircraft engine. The diameter of the, this piston is five, just over five inches, which is what I have described over here. This is the dimensions of this particular piston in its cylinder. The area of this piston with a diameter of 5.1 inches. The area is 20.4 square inches. The stroke of this engine is about just under 4 inches. So we have a piston that's 5 inches across traveling up and down inside of a cavity which describes a cylinder. That is the cylinder of the engine. If you take this big of a piston slide it up and down for four inches that will give that will describe a volume a space that is 80 cubic inches now this is using a different unit from this side over here this is all metric centimeters liters cc's this is described in inches in aviation everything is still using the standard uh, measurements English um, so everything is is described in inches and cubic inches um, but it's it's a different unit of volume but it's still the same principle it's still volume so in this engine we have a single single piston volume in the combustion chamber of around 80 cubic inches again that's the area of the piston multiplied by the height that the piston is moving which is the stroke of the piston and that will give you the volume of that cylinder. In this particular case, 80 cubic inches. Now, this engine has more than one piston. So this engine is not a 80 cubic inch engine. This particular engine, the uh, O320, has four cylinders, four pistons. Therefore, the size of the engine would be this volume per cylinder multiplied times four, because we have four pistons in that engine. If you multiply 80 times 4, we'll give you the total displacement of the Lycoming O320, which is 320 cubic inches. Make sense? Simple? 
Good enough. Very good. Now, and the, the, the same going back going back to metric and more automotive applications. In this, in the case of a four-cylinder engine, that is a two-liter engine. That means that you have a displacement, a per cylinder displacement of 500 cc's. 500 cc's per piston times four pistons. You have a total engine displacement of 2,000 cc's, two liters. Uh, now we're gonna, I'm actually gonna show you this right here, right here. And this is that old uh, Briggs and Stratton engine that I mentioned a little earlier and what I want to do is here's the cylinder you can see inside of it that's the cylinder this is the piston that came out of that and I want to connect the piston to the connecting rod and connect it down to a crank shaft and we're going to spin it so that you can see the piston moving up and down because theory it is nice and dandy. I love it, but it's much better when you can see what it is that we're talking about. So let's connect the piston, whether it's connecting rod, using its wrist pin. That pin is called a wrist pin. Imagine the piston being your your hand. And your arm being the connecting rod as the piston is moving up and down and the connecting rod is connected to the crankshaft which is spinning in a circle that would be like you holding onto the piston moving up and down your wrist is the one that's allowing the movement so this would be the arm that would be the wrist this would be your hand so that pin is called the wrist pin This off. We're going to partially assemble this. Inside of, inside of here, we have a crankshaft. As this spins, it moves the connecting rod all the way around. And that moves the piston up and down. There you go. There's the top of the travel bottom of the travel that there that space in that cylinder that is the size of the combustion chamber that is what determines the size of that engine if you take the area of that piston which is what we calculated earlier and you multiply it times its travel how far it moves up and down that cavity that is the volume of that cavity that is the displacement of the engine that is how much air and fuel that piston will displace as it moves up and down there you go that's how you calculate the size of an engine that is what the size of the engine whenever you hear the size of the engine that's what that means now again this is in the case of a single piston engine. Whatever that displacement is, that is the size of that engine. If you had two pistons, then this engine would have twice the displacement. It would be twice as big of an engine. If you had eight cylinders, going back again to the Mustang, um, you would have eight times that displacement. In case of a V12 on the Jaguar, Ferrari, etc., you have 12 times that displacement. You get the point. But that movement of the piston up and down is what determines the displacement of the engine multiplied times the number of cylinders there you go i hope it's simple i hope you found it interesting
I hope it helps. I think this is all pretty interesting. Go from this to that. <laughs> and everything works. Alright, you guys stay safe. Have a good time. See you next time.